Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. For this month's Bird Notes program, we're going to see some of the birds caught this year at the Green Mountain Audubon Bird Banding Station. Joining us from the Audubon Center in Huntington is bird expert and conservation biologist Mark Labar. Thank you so much for being with us, Mark. Always a pleasure, whether it's in person or virtually. <laughs> so uh, you have been busy at the banding station this summer? I have. So this is our more than 20 years we've been running um, a monitoring avian productivity and survivorship banding station. There's about 500 of these across North America that collect data to better understand um, survivorship, how long birds live, and productivity. And we set the nets up uh, in the same place pretty much every year during the breeding season to catch the resident birds here uh, at the center. Fantastic. So what did you catch this year? So, you know, we, um, we went out and what I'm going to talk about today are kind of the usual suspects. Uh, these are birds that we catch pretty regularly. Um, and our, you know, where we have the net set up, this Viri is a great example of a bird that uh, inhabits the area around the beaver ponds at the Audubon Center. Mm -hmm. uh, down low, this is a thrush, so it's related mm -hmm. to blur bluebirds and robins. Um, we also catch its relatives, the uh, wood thrush. Mm -hmm. And you can see here, um, I'm holding the bluebird, I mean the, uh, the Viri. Viri. And you can see the band on yeah. its leg, that little silver bracelet. So each one of the birds that we catch, um, we put this band on and they have a unique number on them so we can track them. And oftentimes I will catch veeries over and over again from year to year. And these birds migrate all the way down to South America. And it's really cool that they come back to the Audubon Center to breed. Right, and there's your band right on them. So what other, yeah. what are some of the other uh, regular suspects that you, you catch? So, you know, a lot of times, uh, and I think you asked this question is, you know, how we catch these birds. Mm -hmm. And we use uh, what are called mist nets, which are very fine nets that the birds are caught in. And I have a federal permit to um, actually catch these birds. One of which kind of looks like the Viri, but this is our oven bird. So cute. And it's a warbler. Um, but it is a bird that spends a lot of time down low and on the ground, and it gets its name because its nest is look, kind of looks like a pizza oven. Huh. Uh, and it goes, its, it's call is pizza, 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 <laughs> which goes in the oven. Right. Another bird that we catch, which is a, a favorite of mine, mm. uh, and you can see here, um, I'm trying to get his attention, his or her attention, so that he... Uh, poses for the camera. Uh, this is a gray catbird. And uh, the reason that I like catbirds so much is uh, it was the first bird I ever ever handled down in mm. Massachusetts. Hmm. And one sings to me in the summertime every morning uh, in the lilac bushes next to the house. Fantastic. So uh, this is a great bird. And then uh, as we get into the wetter areas of the center here, more directly uh, in the beaver pond flow, we'll start catching these birds, which is the masked bandit, uh, the <laughs> common yellow throat. And this is another warbler. Uh, and it's a bird that likes those wet, damp places, uh, shrubby areas, um, which we have a lot of here at the Audubon Center. Well, and they look, they look so calm in your hand. I mean, you should be a hand model, but um, clearly there's a special way that you have been trained to hold the birds. Yeah, there's a couple different ways. That one picture of the Viri that you saw me with the band on it, that's called the Bander's Grip, and mm -hmm. that's how it gives you more control. And then the other pictures that I show you, yeah, you see how I have them kind of in a little cage in my hand? Mm -hmm. And then the other uh, pictures are what we call the Photographer Grip, and that allows us to hold on to its legs. Uh, and more often than not, they'll cooperate and they'll just sit us sit there for us so we can take pictures and other you know, take pictures and other can, people can take pictures. Um, and identify them. I'm, and identify them. So here's another bird. Um, you can see he's nibbling on my finger <laughs> there. And uh, sometimes they're easy to identify. Uh, this is a pretty common forest bird here at the Audubon, something that lives higher up. This is the red-eyed vireo. And you can see yeah. that really distinct red eye that this bird has. Yes. And it has a little hooked bill, 
Um, and again, they sing all day long and they're much more of a canopy species, but they do come down uh, and we do catch them in our nets. Hmm. Another bird that we catch a lot of, uh, in, in a large part because of the beavers activity that's been here, this is a chestnut sided warbler. And you can see that um, really nice brown chestnutty patch on the side. Uh, this is a bird that likes uh, kind of middle ground. So young forest saplings that are just growing up. Um, you know, once the beavers came in and, and chewed everything down as things grown up, we've been catching more and more of these chestnut sided warblers. It's just beautiful. So, so it's really what the, what the beavers do to the habitat attracts those birds. Correct, right. As they kind of change it over time, things change. And then there are some birds which are a little bit more difficult to tell. This is what we call a trails flycatcher. And that's a group of birds which encompasses the alder flycatcher and the willow flycatcher. Hmm. But in the hand, uh, we can't tell the alder from the willow. More likely this is an alder because that's what I hear singing around the center. Uh, but the only way we can tell them apart uh, without looking at tail, you know, all sorts of calculations is by listening to their song. Hmm. So we, we group them and we're still able to ban them. And uh, this is a trails flycatcher um, because of that. Terrific. And, you know, what can you determine by looking at the birds so closely? So when we capture the birds, we catch a lot of data. We try to age the birds. We try to sex them, uh, figure out whether they're males and females. Um, we measure their wings uh, and we weigh them before we, of course, release all these birds. And uh, sometimes, for instance, with uh, this next bird, the indigo bunting, you can actually um, determine uh, how old it is and what sex it is just by by looking at it. You can see here there's a little deer fly catching a little <laughs> lift on the back. But uh, because this guy has a mixture of blue and some of that brown feathers, this tells us it's a male and a second year male. So a bird that had hatched the previous year uh, and it won't get its full uh, blue plumage uh, that you would see in an older bird until later. So just by looking at the plumage characteristics, we can tell a lot. And then we look for brood patches and other uh, indicators for, um, you know, sex, for instance, for birds that uh, look a lot alike in the hand and don't have uh, different color plumages between the male and the female. And in the, in the spring and the fall, the, the, are there lots of major changes um, seasonally? Yeah, so we try to catch the birds with this station just during the breeding season. So I'm finished right now. We caught probably, you know, more than 200 birds, or I handled more than 200 birds. Many of them are recaptures, birds that I've caught before here. Um, but what happens is this time of year, once the birds have started to uh, finish up their breeding cycle, they'll start their molt. Uh -huh. And they'll begin to lose their feathers. And some birds, like that chestnut-sided warbler, can look vastly different in the fall hmm. than it does um, in the springtime. And that's where you get the the uh, confusing fall warblers. Right. Um, so difficult. Uh, just so we don't miss them, what are some of the more exciting birds you've caught? And, and I guess in your career, you you told me once that you have caught probably more than 15,000 birds. Yeah, so I've, I've been banding birds for uh, more than 30 years. And um, I started doing it back when I was 23 and I traveled to various places uh, in Central South America, the Caribbean, Hawaii, um, and here in Vermont with the common terns. And, um, you know, we catch some pretty cool birds. This is yeah. one that we don't catch often at the banding station. This is a brown creeper. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's a bird that creeps on the outside trunk and you can't see it here because my hand's covering up, but uh, they have really long toenails huh. and they use those to hold on to the side of the tree and they use that long bill to probe in and around cracks for insects and eggs and things like that. So uh, this is always a good one. <laughs> and this is a bird that um, we caught this year for the second time. This is a Blackburnian warbler. Mm, beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's a gorgeous bird that just that flaming colors on the face. And this is a bird that we tend to find 
uh, further up on the hillside in uh, at the Audubon Center, but not down around the banding station where we have the nets. So this is always a great bird when we catch something um, a little higher up that pops into our nets down low. Hmm. And this bird uh, is a white collared mannequin. This this was a real special bird that we caught this year. Wow, I've I'm, never heard of that one here. I, I, I'm joking. Oh. This, this, <laughs> this is a Belizean bird. Uh, last fall and probably on an upcoming uh, Across the Fence show, we'll talk about my trip to Belize. But I just threw this one in here for yucks. <laughs> uh, this is a bird that is a tropical Central American bird. Uh, we did not catch it here. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it uh, later. Is, is there a bird that you hope to catch that you haven't caught yet? So all summer long, I've been hearing black-billed cuckoos hmm. around uh, my yard and uh, in and around the banding station. And this is a really cool bird, very secretive. Hmm. I've only seen him once. Uh, he does a cuckoo, 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 kind of like his name. Uh -huh. And um, I did not catch him in the nets, even though I knew he was around. And I did see a youngster at one point a couple of days ago so I know they bred here very close, but um, still looking it's still. Yeah. And uh, I was fortunate years ago to be in Mississippi when there were birds coming in from the Yucatan and we caught we had a couple of days where we caught a ton of cuckoo. Wow. But I would have liked to have caught that one here in uh, at the banding station. We have a great picture of you and a chickadee, but I want to make sure that people know how to get in touch with you with bird related questions. Uh, you can pass along to Mark at the address on your screen um, at um, mlabar at audubon.org. You can send Mark your questions and pictures and he'll try to answer. Um, find those answers for you on an upcoming edition of Bird Notes. There's this wonderful picture of you with a chickadee. There he is hanging on. When, yeah, the the two of us are checking each other out and you can see that bird is it is in a mist net so but i was taking another bird out and it grabbed onto my hat and um we, we were eye to eye we gotta go mark but i just love that shot thank you so much for joining us today you're welcome and thank you for joining us across the fence i'm fran stoddard stay well